Hello again. Are you using your handicap like a child would use confetti at a wedding? It's all gone before the bride comes out of the church. If you are, come back in a moment and I'll tell you how to use it wisely. Hello again. Do you have a strategy for playing golf? Now I know a lot of you are playing the same golf course every day and every week, so you've probably developed a bit of a strategy over time. You know where to take a driver and when not to take a driver. But if you were to play an unfamiliar golf course, what would you do then? Would you go online and get the birdie book and work out some kind of a strategy? Or do you just basically go and hit it as far as you can and then hit it again? I think, unfortunately, a lot of you do exactly that. Um, I've been on the course recently with some students and find that they will usually pull this club out of the bag first, whether they can hit it or not. They'll then f take another club out of the bag, which they haven't hit in three years, and expect to hit it today. Um, that's not necessarily the best strategy. And it's amazing, really, if you talk to amateur golfers, they're usually very humble creatures. But when you get them on a golf course, they seem to be able to remember hitting that three wood from the deck 200 meters over water. And that's not necessarily going to help you in your handicap. So what is handicap? You've got to remember that handicap isn't some kind of medal of honor where you can show everybody how good you are, but it was actually developed to make a level playing field if your different handicaps or different standards of golf are playing against one another. So the big trick here is basically to use your handicap and the strategy that you have on a golf course. There's a little thing we call greens and regulation, which gives you an idea of how you should use your strategy and also shows us why you're actually probably using the wrong strategy. Greens and regulation gives you an idea of what a tour professional or a scratch handicap golfer should be doing on a hole. So if you take a par three, he should hit the green with one shot. If you take a par four with two and a par five with three. The question is, are you capable of doing that? But are you still trying to do that? Even a tour professional will hit an average 12 to 14 greens in a round, which means if they can't do it, how are you going to do it? So my recommendation is stop even trying, especially on the, on the holes which are more difficult. Fortunately for you, when you look at the scorecard, there is a so-called stroke index which will tell you how difficult the hole is. This is a 360-yard par 4, which is protected by two large water hazards at both right and left of the green. And it has a stroke index of seven, which means anybody with a handicap higher than seven is getting a shot here. Now, how would you play that as a 15 handicap golfer? Well, most likely you would reach in the bag for this one, hit it as far as you can, reach in the bag for the next one and try and hit it on the green. And obviously you're going into an awful lot of risk for very little reward. Think of the hole differently. If you're a handicap even eight and you're getting a shot here, you could theoretically take three shots to get on the green. Greens in regulation is worked out by the distance and two putts. So given that you are gonna take two putts on every green, then you can spread out your handicap in the long shots. And if you can't take two putts on every green, then you're watching the wrong video. Spreading the handicap over the long shots means spreading it out over the entire golf course. So there's going to be, as a 15 handicap, 15 holes where you're getting a shot and changing your strategy, and only three hots, shots or holes where you're going to try and actually hit the green in standard regulation. So let's take this hole as an example. It's 360 yards, so if you look into your bag and look for the most reliable club there that hits it the furthest, some of you might even find it's a driver. And then, okay, how far do you hit it? Can we be honest and say around about 200 yards? So you hit that 200 yards, straight down the middle. What have you got as the rest? 160 yards, what do you hit 160 yards? I would say the majority of people are hitting maybe something between a five iron and a three hybrid. But is that a reliable club? Because you're going into a very narrow target there. If it isn't, then you should be laying up. But if you're laying up, then, well, why did you have to take the risk of taking a driver in the first place? Think about it again. 200 yards for your driver, 120 yards for your seven iron, because most people can hit one of those, and you've got a 40 yard pitch. Or maybe you can hit your hybrid quite well. 160 yards hybrid, 
twice, 320 yards, you've got a 40 yard pitch. If you practice 40 yards pitches, it's very likely you might be close to the hole on a few greens and might only take one putt and then you've played your par. But the risk of you taking some kind of disaster is a lot less. So the tip today is really quite simple. You decide where you drop shots on the round, not the golf course, and most certainly not your golf clubs. On the contrary, what you first of all want to do is go on the driving range and try and get some kind of objective feeling of how often are you actually going to hit these things well. And when you know that, say you've got a 60% chance of hitting the fairway with your drive, you've got a, an 80% chance of hitting it with your five wood, you've got a 50% a chance of hitting the green with your five iron, but you've got a, an 80% chance of hitting it with your seven iron. Um, these are kind of numbers that you want to have in your head when you're deciding your strategy. Then basically if you look at the scorecard, separate your handicap over the entire round and change your personal green in regulation to suit it. So on this hole again, you might want to hit a hybrid, a hybrid, a pitching wedge. Practice those pitching wedges try and hit the same approach shot as often as possible. And if you do this, I can promise you, your scores will come tumbling down in no time at all, because you're gonna get rid of all of those penalty shots. Now sure, some of the shots that you hit, even with the, the clubs which are more reliable, won't work every time. But you've always got to remember that you don't always have to get on the green in regulation. And by not putting yourself under pressure, you're actually going to get on the green in a net regulation far more often. Think again that the pro is only getting on 12 to 14 greens. That means like four to six times he's saving himself and four to six times you're going to have to maybe save yourself as well. But that's why we've got a short game. So practice your short game and your save will get a little bit more regular, let's say. If you are a scratch golfer and you're trying to play greens in regulation, even you should think about that. There are going to be holes which you can't reach and there are going to be holes which don't offer you the reward that they actually, you actually deserve if you reach them. Getting a par on the hole is not enough reward for hitting a green in two and especially if there's a water hazard next to the green or an out of bounds maybe you'd be better off laying up on that. And don't remember, some of the other 17 holes will be quite simple. And that's where you should be trying to be a little bit more aggressive with your game. In my opinion, the amateur golfer becomes aggressive by trying to hit a golf club that he can't hit and hoping that it works. Whereas a professional golfer is trying to hit a club that he can hit closer to a flag that maybe is better protected than another one. And that's my idea of being an aggressive golfer. Strategy is not about playing safe. Strategy is about playing sensible. Play to your strengths and not to the strengths of the golf course. Get out of the way of your own weaknesses. And if you find that there is a golf club missing, that's the time to take a lesson. That's the time to go out there and find out from your professional how to keep your driver on the golf course or to hit a five wood or three wood off the ground. I hope this helps you on the next round. Sit down at a table beforehand and go through the birdie book. Plan your way around the golf course. Try and develop a system for your strengths and weakness, even on a daily basis. And if it helps, leave me a comment below. If it doesn't help, leave me a comment below. If you like the video as ever, please hit the like button. Hit the little bell as well if you want to get notifications for the next videos that are coming up very shortly. I'm going to leave my philosophy up here um, on golf and the golf swing if you'd like to read that. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll see you all soon.